Hey guys, this is Patrick Carl Salamon. You might know me as the guy with the most IM medals in the world. Pleasure being here. By the way, I, generally, I yeah. saw that you did come come back like a couple yeah, of times later, but I'm guessing it wasn't. I knew it was gonna your heart come. wasn't in it, right? No, yeah, I assume you're talking about uh, whatever they're called, meteor makers. Yeah. Uh, yeah it was a few years I later we're talking about that. I, yeah. I, I, I don't count that. Right. But yeah, everyone is counting that. And okay. To be fair, to be fair, obviously. But <laughs> when I left Matrix 2003, I didn't open CS once. I, I never played with other. I never liked playing right. uh, mixes and gathers. I never enjoyed it. I only liked playing with my friends the clan wars and practice wars that, that that's what i like and then <laughs> vov came out world of warcraft i played that uh, like 50 times more hardcore oh, wow. i ever played cs i played easily 14 hours a day average i uh, was among the best in world of warcraft for, what, for, what class for, did you play i played mage Oh, okay. If people don't know, in World of Warcraft, like, I actually knew a few people who played back then. First of all, it actually is, even though the game, you know, obviously anyone can play normal World of Warcraft. The, the version we're talking about, the arena mode, was really hardcore. Like, I remember when we used to have pro players in the teams I worked in, I used to sometimes ask them, like, what does this class do? Or, like, what was he doing there? And what I found was this. First of all, like, the mage class is one of the insane ones because there's so many different spells you're doing all the time. And then they basically yes. told me, like, I'm sorry, like, no offense, but I actually can't explain to you what's happening. It's just too complicated. You have to basically be almost at our level to know like what's happening in the game because there's so many abilities and healing and the warrior class. It was insane, right? It was very very underrated yeah, game. It, it is uh, very <laughs> a lot to explain, and if you have no idea what's going on there, it's going to take a while to explain. It's not as simple as CS. You just point and click. I had my I had 64 binds for my image, so. <laughs> So yeah, there is a lot, but not that you use all of them. No, in, no. All, all, but still, they're there, and uh, it's a different level kind of uh, kill playing Vov from CS. Though you don't need the uh, sound uh, okay. uh, aspect of it because you don't everything you have add-ons that show everything, etc. But in CS, I, that's what I liked a lot about CS. You could use your hearing if you were good at hearing and decipher yes. how many people are actually stepping here yeah, yeah give accurate comes from that that could give a lot of information yeah but, actually uh, by the way that's one thing actually uh, uh, this is a bizarre tangent but actually the tech for some of the things in cs games that was worse for sound like you actually it's not as clean whereas actually i agree because 1.6 was coming from quake you could hear like a footstep anywhere yeah. on the map basically as long as it was yes so, so i agree you could if you were a cerebral player you could really <clears> dominate right yes and that was also a strong point i had i could actually hear if it's one uh, two three or four people and you also hear the different material people are stepping yes. on so you could uh, decide from that part right give me some thoughts on world of warcraft then. like what, what was the appeal i mean did you actually like that it was so hard that it was so complicated uh i always liked uh, the fantasy all oh, right setting and uh, all magic stuff so that that's what appealed to me the i like uh liked warcraft the the universe itself and then they made an mmo so why not and I already stopped playing <laughs> so I needed something new. And I... uh, many friends were playing that. Yes. So. And eventually Fisker and Brunk came as well. And we he also played that hardcore. Were you I in a team play. together? Uh, yes, we got together after the first expansion. We played in the same guild. Because actually, if people don't know, there was actually <clears> quite a few, not only famous World of Warcraft stars in Arena, etc., but there was actually quite a lot of esports people went into it. Do you remember any names that were you could uh, memorable to you or big names or top players? Uh, you mean in the in the PvP aspect or in the PvE aspect? Because there are two separate. Flashes. I meant in the, like, um, in the Arena board, yeah. Yeah, we were actually also on the. The so-called tournament ramps also by Blizzard, uh, we qualified to that too, but we never, I, I don't remember. the you didn't obvious go to the one. or whatever? No, we right. were beaten by the, the rivals, Swedes, <laughs> the warders. Those are the only one worth mentioning uh, as far as I remember. 
they were very yeah. good. And there are Swedish uh, Dauk, Dark Age of Camelot oh, sure, Warrior. Yes. Uh, so yeah, so they're. Were you actually into that player. game? Because I actually know before World of Warcraft, I, that was I, the game I, everyone played, right? Dark Age of Camelot. I, I did not play Dark. Right. But Me Medion did, and I think Heaton did as well. The only thing is, though, that was the era. that It was actually that game and then EverQuest and then World... These are the games that famously back yes. then killed a lot of CS careers, right? Yeah. Yes, correct. Uh, they took all the time. <laughs> it's a second job, basically. Full-time job. Another so, yeah, reason but, that's obvious... And again, they're... they're, uh, they're they're on a different level. It, it was a great time, better than my CS time, to be honest. Uh, oh, okay. in, in, a, in, a, in a sense, well, I, I spent so many years in it and I uh, had a great time with uh, Fisker and uh, Berk in the, in the guild there. So we raced for World Firsts, etc. All right. Even though, by the way, as we talked about this interview, you obviously could have been in other teams and kept playing if you wanted to. But one reason I don't necessarily blame you for stepping away, it's actually why some of the really great players were the ones who only played a couple of years and didn't have a long career, is there was just so little money in it back then. And I always try to tell people this scream. People do this thing where if they're from America or some other country, they have like what you call in English rose-tinted glasses on when they look at Sweden. They go, oh my God, yes. look at the land cafes. In Sweden, everyone dreams of being a pro. And I used to tell them, look, maybe no nerds do but there's no money in it like in sweden guys the economy was insane like you could like with the even with the prize money you couldn't you wouldn't even be able to afford your apartment in stockholm you know what i mean it was kind yeah, of like true. it wasn't a proper job was it <clears throat> no no you didn't earn anything you went minus more or less and uh, if you didn't have any sponsorship as well then you definitely went minus because you need to book the flight there's it's not cheap going to yep. us <laughs> the expensive ticket the to get there and then the uh, lodging hotel uh, all of that so there's without proper sponsors uh, and there were no salaries back then yep there were there were no streaming back then yep wasn't even youtube man there was nothing <laughs> no no yeah exactly no youtube nothing yep. were but you yeah, somewhere we, where did this ever cause any problems with your parents or something did they ever tell it just quit that shit or stop playing the game yeah, in the start, but I uh, understood uh, that <laughs> it's what I do. They were quite right. supportive, so that's cool. But not everyone is that lucky. Even though in some parts of this interview you sounded like you were like, "Oh, that was my girlfriend thing," or "I did, I could have joined this team," I still get the sense that you have a. It doesn't sound like you have that many regrets, though. Do you ever think back and think, "What if I'd done a different route?" No, not really, because if I do different route back then then stuff gets different in the future sure so, right so yeah. i if i continue to play cs uh really went for it hardcore i wouldn't have played world of warcraft because there would simply be no time and uh, right. that's a very conflicting game to play it will fuck up your aim i played uh, quake when i did not play cs Oh, right. Just because okay. to pra practice my aim there. Did you just go back to Quake World or did you play Quake 3? What were you playing at the time? At that time, uh, later, Quake 3, Rocket Arena. Just, ah, to practice right. the, just to practice the aim and movement. Yes. Actually, if people don't know, a lot of Swedish CS players used to play Rocket Arena as like a warm-up thing, you know, to get the sensitivity yes. going and flux. It's like a really high-speed game, right? Yes. And uh, that's why I used to do that with Spawn. We played a lot of uh, Rocket Arena just to have the movement and the aim up. And there were at some point uh, <clears throat> where I played uh, a lot of Rocket Arena and caught the attention of the top two teams in the Rocket Arena League there. And they, I played for them, but uh, it came to a point where they gave me the ultimate. You need to choose. You play either CS or Rocket Arena. Right. Obviously, I picked uh, CS. Same happened with the Unreal Tournament. The, some the best team they wanted me to play. They were sponsored by Nine, uh, so uh, they were sit. It was like a double clan room, so they were sitting in the right. room next to me, to us, and uh, I played turn uh, Unreal Tournament with them, and they gave, <laughs> gave me an offer, but that I declined because uh, the hell Unreal Tournament would have placed that. 
I don't know if you've been to any of the big cafes recently, but I have to say the last time I went in the CS Go times, it was actually really depressing screen because when I went there, like I used to come from the UK where we were tiny country, not that good. Our internet was terrible. I used to come to Sweden when I used to work with these companies. And when I would go to these land cafes, mm-hmm. I used to believe that dream. Made, like, oh my God, this is like, like some underground culture. Like, oh my God, that's that player. That's that player. And it was really dope. And actually, like you say, there even used to be like crowds of just kids. Like there's yes, like loads of 13 year old kids like, oh, that's eating or something. And so when I came back in CSGO, here's what's really depressing, Scream. When I went in, almost no one was playing CS. They were all playing like League of Legends or yeah, Fortnite yeah. or whatever. And I remember thinking like, that kind of, that era's kind of gone, right? Were, give me yeah, a sense is. of what it was like back in the day when CS was the game. Uh, well, we had our regulars. We pulled a lot of traffic to the cafes. We, oh, right. Uh, people, people could just stay behind and take bets on who, <laughs> when we were pracking. If it would be, it was always like, oh, did you beat it? Uh, did you beat Potty? Etc. <laughs> and they were taking their food, e- sitting there eating at the cafe and we were having a shit chat with everyone there, more or less. And uh, I mean, uh, that happened in uh, the Cafe 9 as well. We pulled a lot of traffic. People came down into the clan room and uh, those that were allowed, though, <laughs> because it was private. But uh, had a, it was a more back then before everyone had better computers and uh, uh, internet connection. Uh, I really miss those days because it was more of a binding to the, with people. Uh, and I liked that, the friendship. Yes. I even also thought it's actually a secret reason I think why Swedish CS was so good because when people ask me now why is Swedish CS just like okay it's not that it's not nowhere near the top of CS2 and one of the reasons I always tell them is because it actually also created a sort of natural hierarchy as you'd say in English as in when someone is an up and coming player they go to the cafe they play there they hope they meet someone who's good they can get into their team or you get to play maybe you pick up against you or some other player or you go to one of those lands where people do the mixed teams rendezvous or birdie or whatever you go to and that was kind of like a way to break in the scene it was like it was basically the equivalent if people know sports of like how you get into a football team if you're a kid you go to the park you hope you meet someone you get into an amateur team you there's kind of like a ladder you could climb right it's actually true that happened several times where people came to the cafe and just show themselves and like this is me and this is what i can do and uh, if there were any good players there they're like yeah shit you're really good (laughs) i did that myself to our guy so and uh that happened before Matrix at the Cafe oh, Ice. Right. Uh, Westland didn't really consider me a good player. They came on LAN. They were sponsored at the same cafe. And uh, I was like, okay, uh, we can take a pra- We practice we versus each other. They, it was Mafia back then. And uh, they were completely smashed <laughs> by us. Ooh, okay. Our team, yeah, I think we were called Valeo, some uh, random team uh, but they got really stomped and they all came out from their clan room with red faces you know, like this is me <laughs> do you know me now so and um, so it, it was a legit tactic back then since you talked about some of the moves you didn't do for good reasons was there actually any players or teams you did want to play that you didn't get a chance to or someone you just never got a chance to be on the same team with them uh yes Uh, that specific uh, incident I just talked about I actually wanted to play with Mafia because when I watched them play they were uh, I never seen CS in that tactical sense they were doing loads of strats I know Vesla had like all the fucking printouts of everything uh, yeah I remember this looks so cool so structured I, I want to have like this right so I kind of applied uh, I don't remember much, but uh, I re- I remember that he was kind of like, who are you? <laughs> go go away, right. little boy. And I took that to heart. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, the grudge, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a grudge, but uh, not that. No, no, just like you said, just a healthy competition, yeah. right? Yeah, yes. Yes. What about... Um... Uh, is there any interesting angle on the World of Warcraft thing? Like, could you actually, like, like you say there, you almost qualified to one of the lands. If people don't know, a few years after this, there actually was that like MLG circuit famously where there was a bunch of like big tournaments yeah. and prize money. Could you have gone more pro in that game if you'd wanted? Did you choose not to? Yes, uh, probably. But uh, the team I, I played with at the moment, 
I had to focus on uh, full-time PV, the going for the world first, uh, and at that level, you you don't really do both. Right. So when uh, it started to really boom, I already left that behind. Yes. I did get some uh, the gladiator titles uh, every season, so but I didn't go to the tournament realms, so to say. Yeah, someone told me that um, the arena mode, the 3v3, was a bit more like, I mean, it, there wasn't any back then, but nowadays people would obviously know MOBAs, like Dota and so. They said it was a bit more like that. Like, you had, essentially, you had it was all about, like, you had to have the right comp that was strong at that time. And you had to yes. know, like, the order that they were going to do their abilities. You could block it. And it was, it was like, it, you had to sort of know the meta of the other teams, right? It wasn't just play like PvE. Yeah, it is heavily comp-based, but to some degree, but... Uh... You do need to know the uh, composition, what beats what, and you need to plan accordingly what to play yes. <laughs> to calculate or oh, see who who is going to play what, and you build your team around that. But uh, it takes a lot of time collecting all the stuff required for each character to play. So sure. normally people only play one or two characters. Did you play any other roles? Was it was it only a mage? Originally only a mage, but uh, eventually it evolved to uh, warrior as well, a shaman and warlock. Primarily mage, and then uh, warrior. Was the warrior class overrated? Because I know that all the famous warrior people always thought they were like the best player in the world in World of Warcraft, you know? Well, uh, so there's a very... The skill ceiling for a warrior is uh, very high back then in Burning Crusade and the classic WoW because uh, back then it was a lot harder to play warrior effectively. So you immediately see if it's a good warrior or right. a bad warrior. So it's one of the hardest classes to play proper. Absolutely. It's in a sense a lot easier to play a mage because it's you have a lot of more uh, room to... Uh, do stuff, but whereas in Warrior, you really need to know when to uh, play defensive and play offensive and uh, play around your positioning because uh, of your healer, etc. You're does, in there in oh, melee. Yeah. Does having all this success in these different games or showing you were good, does it imply you have a natural talent for games? Yes. <laughs> I've always been uh, playing games and I've uh, always been good at that. So whatever I play, I become good at usually. Do you try to play anything now? Is there anything you, you get in there and play? Not competitive. Uh, I left those days behind, and unfortunately, and I wish I was uh, 15 again. But uh, <laughs> sure. I, I, trust me, I would. Uh, that, had I been 15 today, I would stream and do all of. Oh, you'd be a million ever. Yeah. Yeah, and I would definitely play CS2. Absolutely. Uh, you never like booted up CS Gold secretly under an alt and just had a, had a game a night or something. I waited two years after a few patches when CSGO was released. So it could be, it, it was very bad with the sound setting. Yeah. So um, I, I was used to the standard uh, back then. And when I played CSGO, uh, th this can't happen. But after two years, I think I played the total uh, two to 300 games. I got to Global Elite and then I stopped. All right. In CS in CS2, Legenden. Oh, he's actually, playing still, right? Yeah, he came a few months ago only. Actually, until then, I haven't even touched CS:GO or CS2. I declined right. every single person who wanted to play with me. But for some reason, Legend, and I was like, the people yeah, keep coming and trying to like draw you out of retirement. Like, this, come on, come play with us. People at work as well. Like, oh, right. hey, ain't it time for a comeback? You should start streaming. La 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 la. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even if I wanted to, it's I, I need to have the motivation. Without the motivation, it's just not gonna work. I also get the feeling like you're the sort of person where if you do something, you want to do it properly, right? You don't want to be half yes. in and then just be okay in and be yes. remembered as a bad player. Like it's why you say it in a, if for you, you don't really count MYM because that wasn't the real scream, right? No, I actually did it for Spawn's brother, Megaton. Megaton, yeah. I, I don't remember exactly the premise, but I took it like they don't get their sponsor unless I come or right. something like that. So, And 
as I said, this was 2006 or something, and yes. I didn't even touch CS, not a single time. <clears throat> and uh, I was already involved. <laughs> Twin, like, uh, average in 16 hours a day. And uh, that does a lot to the aim. I can tell you that. <laughs> but uh, so I joined them. Uh, I did not really like how we practiced. I was used to the, we sit at the cafe and we get together all five and we go through tactics and what and and play together. It wasn't like that at all. They they already adopt this, what is main to the, like how you play today. Everyone plays for themselves, mixes right. and all that. And that is, I just couldn't. <laughs> I just couldn't. And uh, at the time, they were the players that were, before I quit, they were a tier below as well. Yes. So I, I just couldn't motivate myself. And I, did, I don't think I performed good at all. I, I don't remember. I, I don't think so. <laughs> By the way, are you someone who ever just actually is a spectator? Did you ever follow any big sports? Uh, no. I you were like a hockey guy or a football guy or something? I, I, I'm more a hockey guy. Did you ever used to watch um, NHL? Uh, very. I, I liked boxing and the UFC. Oh, right. And okay. So, All right. Well, because right. I wanted to have, ask as a fun way to ask you this, right? If someone didn't see screenplay, say yes, maybe you could pick a UFC mm. fighter. Who would be the sportsman who was kind of like Scream? Who, 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 would, who, would, who do you feel like you have a connection with or they had a style like you or some quality that you could identify with? Well, my favorite boxer was uh, Iron Mike back then. So. Oh, Mike Tyson. Yeah, of course. Uh, yes. That is... Uh, I don't think I identify <laughs> as him. But, <laughs> sure. But, it's but, a personality, but, yeah. I guess not. But, yeah, he doesn't give up, basically. And he gives everything when he... But, yeah. By and the I, way... I, I, yeah, go on. I also liked the uh, Hickson family and Bass Rutten in Pancras. Oh, sure. Very, very, very really old. Early days. Yeah, yeah, the really yeah. early days. The early 2000s we're talking about, yeah. yeah. It was actually yes. when you were playing CS, yeah. Yes. Right. True. What about, um, let me think what I was going to ask there. Oh, that's it, that's it. I was going to ask a question which goes, are you someone where, the, when you stopped playing competitive CS, a lot of people say, it's a bit like when sports stars retire, they often say like you still need something to scratch the competitive itch as it is, yes. you know, like the addictive feeling of winning and beating someone and being the best. Did World of Warcraft actually give you that? Did it give you that sense? Yes, yes I ganked the shit out of everyone. <laughs> was, yes, I was a horrible uh, enemy to players and we, I had my own team of uh, <laughs> yeah, we were disgusting people <laughs> we co corpse camped and uh, set up schedules just to uh, keep them offline yes well, whenever they logged back in we, uh, we had a guy there camping so yeah, if people yeah. don't know, that was for some reason something that I noticed CS players, maybe because it's such a ruthless <laughs> game, always did in all the MMORPGs, which is they always wanted to be the people who just ruined the, the PvP areas. And just like you say, you wait till the guy with all the items comes. And then it's, it's like actually the medieval period when you go along the road and you wag it. It's like the thieves jump out the bandits and steal all your shit, right? That was what you you, you were getting, you were getting off on yeah. that. It was fun. Yes, I was always... <laughs> Always the nice boy in uh, CS, <laughs> but holy crap, I was a, right, you're a villain, right? A tra trash guy. And that was part of the role I played uh, sure. Undead Mage. It didn't ma they didn't just have to die, they had to really suffer. So there was a way to kill people so they actually got the repair cost. And cold oh, was right. uh, so if, if you die to PVE or like drowning, then then you get the repair cost. So what we used to do, I had to, I had a priest friend mind controlling people down into the water, and then I hold him there with my freezing ability, so to say. So he actually drown and get the repair cost. So then that's one way of doing it. One thing I think is quite cool is, like you say, that throughout the years, ex-teammates or people you knew would always be like, come and play again. Because actually, one thing I find sad sometimes when I do an old school interview is sometimes there are the players who I know were amazing, but then like people forgot them. And then they, were, they even said, you know, like I play with people from work and they were like, hey, you're not bad at this game. Maybe you should like pride. Yeah. And they'd be sort of going, bro, I used to be like the best. Like, But it sounds cool that people actually remember you. People in your social circle and your community remember you. 
Yeah, I actually never ever bring up CS or my gaming uh, passion ever. It uh, it's for some reason that it always comes up. Anyways, I I don't know how. <laughs> uh, even at work, they're like, "Oh, you were actually screaming! Cool, <laughs> I knew you back there. I always used to watch you play there." And that is funny. Sure, it's uh, heartwarming, but I don't understand why how people even today know me. That is very weird. But I think you are the one to be blamed for that. <laughs> one of them, like Spawn, also highlights me all the time. Right. I mean, one thing, actually, I would ask along those lines. I, this is why I was actually surprised you said yes, because back in the day, you weren't the guy who did the interviews. I mean, back then, obviously, like you said, there was no YouTube, it wasn't big media. But I would say back in the team, if people want the context, most teams just had one guy, and it's usually the most social person, and that person did all the interviews. Like, you weren't the guy who did the interviews back then. We never did one. No, we didn't, actually. But then again, you didn't ask. It's true. It's true. Uh, I, I am very... <laughs> by myself guy but if people ask questions i am very open and i don't right. decline i was one of those guys that actually answered every single message i got wow. on the irc okay. where everyone else just uh, declined and uh, clicked away the messages but uh, when i left the scene uh, then i truly left and i wanted to be left alone because i didn't want to be right. reminded of what could have been and should yes. have been la da 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 all of that stuff Yes. I, <clears throat> yeah, I kind of got surprised that you didn't do this earlier, but sure. uh, with all your, as all your truth about X, Y, Z, they, I was mentioned in those. Right. So, uh, I expected, oh, soon it's going to come. But here we are 15 years later. Still got it done. Got it done the yeah. end. I will say one of the reasons why is because back in the day, I mean, a lot of us were nerds back then. We were all like social. There was, we weren't all media trained. It wasn't the modern world that it is now. And I have to say back then, it wasn't that you like seemed like a tough guy because obviously you were actually quite a skinny guy, but you always, you always had a very serious look on your face. You always looked like you were yeah. a bit intense. So you were the kind of person where I think people were scared you'd say no if they asked you for an interview. Well, as you said, I was, back then I was, I was a very skinny guy, but uh, I was always friendly to everyone. It's okay. Never any toxic or always good sportsmanship. Right. And I loved being in the uh, ramp or whatever uh, ramp from uh, here. Spotlight. There we go. Oh, spotlight! Yeah. Uh, yes, I loved entertaining crowds. Right. So I played for that or less. Yeah, I would never say no. But uh, then again, kind of like you, I am not afraid to speak my mind. Maybe they were off put to that. Right. By the way, that's one thing also that a lot of people who are modern fans wouldn't know, is that even though most of the 1.6 players obviously didn't play CS GO, and especially the old school people, they were long since retired. I know most people every now and then, though, would tune in and watch like a major or something, because I've had so many messages from old school pros that would even tell me, oh, I can't believe you're still around, or it's cool, CS is still going. Did you ever check in on, on the esports side? I do. I even checked uh, Blast Premiere now. Right. I, I keep on... That's my way of playing, I guess. <laughs> who do you like when you watch? Who, 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 what type of player draws your eye? JL and uh, Wonderful. Oh, Navi players. Okay. And uh, Zaivu is also probably my favorite. Yeah, he's a monster, isn't he? Yes. That's uh, the one I would identify most to or feel a connection to Zaivu. He kind of his mentality and lifestyle. So. Because to me, that's the angle that I would ask you is not like, you know, why didn't you keep playing? There's all these personal reasons as to why, like you say, you had other games. But I feel like this is the angle maybe the ex-teammates should have used. They shouldn't have said like, hey, play with ours, it'll be cool. Or, you know, you can be good again. What they should have done, Scream, is they should have tried to get to your competitive drive. Because I think the cool thing is, yes. I think when you see these amazing players, you'd want to play against Zewu if you can. That's yes. the kind of player you'd like to test yourself against, yes. right? Or simple yeah, or I'm, uh, Yes, I'm highly competitive. And that is, uh, I need a chat. I need to be challenged. That that is actually true. What you're saying there. If uh, if I had uh, that would be proper motivation. If I if they could spark some personal goal that I have to prove something for myself. That's uh, that would be the motivation because when I already reached my own as I said personal goals and I had nothing left 
to prove to myself and I don't care about what everyone else think. I don't need to prove anything to them. At the end, let's do a little quick fire round. So what I want is I'm going to ask for a, a specific player you played with. And what you're going to tell me is the name, but then the reason. So the first one is, who do you think was the most skilled teammate you ever played with? <laughs> well, that's not an easy question. The, no, the you've, most... just, you've got a pretty good list, mate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I guess... I, yeah, I have to say the most complete player is probably Spotty. But uh, other than that, it, it's Spawn. I, we, he and me functioned the best together. Who Spawn. do you think was the smartest teammate you played with? Yeah, well, probably all or all. Most likely, he was very, very bright guy. Who was the most clutch teammate you played with? That, I don't remember. Spawn was a clutcher. Holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, he always managed to clutch. So I would say Spawn there. Who clutch was the funniest teammate? Like, who had the sense of humor that just got to you? Oh... Uh, that's hard to say. It's uh, Fisker is such a retard. <laughs> He's uh, also a retard. Uh, it's either of those two. If, I mean, yeah, it's on a different level. So. Who was so, the? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, uh, they, they they can share Fisker and, and Heaton. Who was the best teammate in the sense of like the team play aspects, not just like best skill? Who was the best actual teammate? Filler. Right. Like you said, he set you up and he yeah, played yeah. the game you liked. Filler, 100%. And then the last one is, who do you think was the most underrated player you played with? Who never got the shine they should have? Uh, well, all, I guess. <laughs> I would say that. I don't think he got the same uh, shine uh, like the rest of them. I mean, he, if he wanted, if he'd, uh, if he'd have had a different personality, he could have been a real yeah, star yes. player, right? Yes, yes. I, I pro he probably is uh, about the personality. I, I don't know. But yeah, he was... Uh, absolutely. Okay, at the end of this interview, do you have a final message? Do you want to say hello off or shout anyone out? Oh, <laughs> all the shout-outs. I guess all my old teammates and Mick is mest lol, not me. Yes, that's, an, that's a really old-school <laughs> meme about all of people. It's yes, really yeah, old-school. Yes. Old. yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, now he's seen the OG, the real one. <laughs> not the new school. Yes. But he's, he's playing Valorant now, though, I think. Yes. Okay, right. Tak så mycket. Oh, tak själv. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Everyone needs a support network, and mine is, of course, my Patreon community, the Scrominati, who, in many ways, they're the sunny to my share, saying, I got you, babe. So this video and all the others on my channel were kindly supported by the following names. I met a Jew, Mac Pugnaccio Rakula, Adam Tomlin, Animosity, Jensen Gore, Tosh, Toucan, and you know it. Jerky's Minion, my main man, always going to be referenced, one of the best patrons of all time. Would you like to ask a question in my AMA? Maybe you want to suggest a topic or a guest to see on my channel. Do you want teasers? Find out who the upcoming Reflections and Talk to Thor interviews are. Maybe you want to do one of those long discussions where you get to set the topics we talk about. Well, if any of these or others appeal to you, put your money where your mouth is. Join the Scaluminati today via the Patreon link in the description box below.